Okay, so cash accounting and GST, and I'm looking on page 58. So JJ uses a cash accounting system. What does that mean? It means that only cash which we've actually received and payments that we actually have made are entered into the data file. We've entered that into my op, okay? If I have bought some fish from Kalis's, okay, and here's my bill here from Kalis's, all right, 500 bucks, I look at that and go, oh, I owe that to Kalis, beauty. And that's where it sits, okay? I'm not going to enter it into my op until I've actually paid it. All right, that's the difference. All right, so that's the difference between cash accounting and accrual. Where when I get that invoice, I whack it into Mob straight away. Mob will go through to that command panel and tell me I owe that um, bill in 30 days. Okay, that's the difference. So your timing would have to be quite good then. You know, yes, it would. Yes, and yep. And what I normally do is I have a file that's marked to be paid in what are we March? I have to remember uh, April. So I've got a file to be paid in April and I've got that sitting there to be paid in March and so on. Yep. And to be paid later than that, 90 days or whatever. Yep. Yep. So have a look. It says bills from suppliers are only entered when the account is paid. So it either goes up. Now, I've seen it done a few ways. I would put it in a file because that's a money thing and that's just what I want to do. But I've seen people put it on their um, board with a bulldog clip or one of those sharp pins that goes into the board, you know, those ones, and they just hang it there for a while. Personally, I like it in front of me, not on a board, where I'm maybe less likely to note the date. So, yeah, you just, just whatever works. Okay. So if you earn under $2 million, you choose which method you want to use. You can choose cash, you can choose accrual. Once you hit over $2 million, you must be accrual, okay? That's a requirement stipulated by the uh, ATO. So accrual accounting, this is where the difference is. Accrual accounting is where all sales and expenses, whether you've paid for them or not, get entered into my old. So here's my bill now from Kalis. It's for 500 bucks. It's not due for another month. It doesn't matter. I enter them today when I get it into my old, and I still put it in my file to be paid later okay the difference is one's entered one's not that's it okay one's a creditor one's in spend money so JJ's reports GST collected and paid on a cash basis and that means that only GST which we've actually paid all right sorry actually collected my month's day and GST actually paid is reported on the BAS okay and then we remit the difference between that to the AGO. If this is the cash, uh, if this is the case, sorry, GST then can only be reported on that cash basis. In reality, you use a combination of both. Okay. So no one's going to tell you off if you've entered this 500 buck invoice here, a uh, bill, sorry, into mild. What it means is it's going to sit under purchases, okay, and it's going to sit there. But the reports that you pull will be for cash, not accrual. If you pull accrual, you're going to report incorrectly because you haven't actually paid it, all right? So cash is better for um, small businesses because they might not have the money always to pay the creditors, all right? So let's set up JJ's takeaway on page... Uh, now, I put 44, but for you guys, it'll be 59. I'll just update that. Okay, so let's turn to 59. We've opened our file. We've got it in there, and let's pull that up together. Close out of your accounts list for me by choosing close. And what we want to do is enter our business details. So we're going to go up to our menu bar and choose setup. And we're going to choose this one here called Company Information. Click on that one. And it's got JJ's takeaway. I'm going to just put a dash there and put our name. So your name, not mine. Let's just make up an address. Mine's going to be 1 Chip Street, put whatever you like, on Fish Street. 
Let's give ourselves a phone number. Give a fax number, not that we're probably going to use it these days. And let's put in a an address, info at jjs.com.au or similar. Okay, so let's just talk about this for a minute. We've got JJ's takeaway. The reason why we're putting Marnie or your name there is just to um, show that it's our file, okay, individual files there. This can be edited at any time if we change premises. We've chucked in these details, which can be changed, of course, and we want to put in an, uh, an email address there um, so that we can send our pay slips to our staff and we can send remittance advices to our suppliers if we had them. We need an ABN to be able to uh, run our operation there, our entity being a sole trader. And we can see here from this page here that we started this file back in 2005 and our current financial year is 2010. Okay, so we're in the financial year 2015-16. So we have to roll over a year. Now ordinarily guys, we wouldn't do this until we got the information from our accountant we get our set of books, we'd have everything reconciled and so on, um, and we're going to pretend that that stage is, is done and we're going to roll over our year. So let's go OK to that one. And where I am in the book is page um, 60. And I'm going to check my financial year, which I've just done. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is, if you go down to point two, it says if the current financial year is not correct for the month you're using, you need to start a new financial year. So that's what we're going to do. So go up to file. Let's do the first one together and then you can just go off and do the rest yourself. File. And we're going to start a new year and start a new financial year. Ordinarily, you would make sure you back up your file because if you muck up this end, you've got always a copy as a backup. Let's pretend we've backed up and choose continue. What's going to happen, and it'll just explain here what's going to happen. Basically, our last year's historical monthly totals will be the monthly totals of the year just completed. Okay. And what happens is um, everything in your cost of sales, your income expenses go back down to zero. Okay, they clear out. Okay, and that moves to your current year earnings. MOB then automatically keeps the following data. Entries made in our new financial year. Entries such as payments were attached um, to open orders invoices. These are talking about ones that are not paid yet. Okay, this part here. And if you've got any un, um, reimbursed expenses. Notice the last bit that says MOB will keep or purge all other entries in your sections um, and they will never purge open transactions. That means they won't put into, into um, a closed account things that are not paid. Okay, they're paid, they do, if they're not paid, they keep them open. So let's choose continue. It's now saying we go from 2010 to 2011. Our last financial month of the year is June. I don't think that changes. Um, sorry, not that part, but this part here, 12. I think we're keeping 12, that's fine. And let's choose continue. Continue, they're going to keep all those, purge those entries there, continue. Um, if we had any paychecks, not that we do, they would be kept, continue. Anything that was unreconciled will be ticked along here. Okay, we don't have anything, that's why that part's blank. Choose continue there and start a new financial year. So can you just go and do that until you get to 15, 16? So we're up to what, 2011. So start a new year, financial year, continue, continue, we're up to 2012, continue, keep continuing till your end, and then do that for 13, 14. So now we're up to 13. Let's keep, we normally wouldn't do this, you understand. We would just be putting in data for every year. 
It's just because, and even if your client was behind, you still do not do this part, okay? 14, so we're owing all this information to our accountant, to the ATO. Okay, so I'm up to 14, 15. What I want this to say is 15, 16, okay? So, oh, hang on, let's just double check. Are we starting? Yeah, because our current year is going to be March, so 15, 16, correct. Um, what am I doing? Starting a new year. Okay, so once you've gone 15, 16, don't go past there, fine. Stay there. Yeah, so our year goes from 1st of July 2015 to 30th of June 16. Yep. Wouldn't that be the next one actually? No, we're in 15, 16. 30th of, 1st of July 2015 to the 30th of June 2016. Make sense? We go from July to June. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. understand that. It's yep. just a financially completed as 2015. Yeah, I'm just confused. I think it's yeah. 2016 now. Because after July, you're going to be in 2016, 17, financial years, 17. We're in the 2015 financial year. We are. Yeah. I'm still in. I've been working on this client, and he's so far behind that I. I think I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> That's twice this week I've done that. I've thought I've got more. Yes, correct. We have not done that one. We are 14, 15. Hang on. We are 15, 16. Okay, so what are we in? Let's have a look. Let's, to check anyway, we can go to setup, go to company information, and we're in the current financial year, yeah, 16. Yep. And it always refers to the... Um, so yes, yeah, so we're in first of July fifteen to the thirtieth of June sixteen. Correct. So this is the financial year that we're in. Yeah. Is it the year that you're starting or the year yes. that you're ending? The year that you're ending. So we're in the fifteen sixteen okay. year. So it is correct. Okay. No. I was thinking to myself, oh, if I can want too far. No, I haven't. So we're in the correct year. It starts from 1st of July 2015. So we're in the 15-16 financial year. That's how we talk about it. For the year ending 30th of June 2016. Correct. Oh, you scared me then. I, I thought I was thinking... the other way around. No, that's okay. It's good to check, isn't it? Because we want to make sure we're in the right year. And honestly, it's because I'm doing companies and entities retrospectively that I always... I'm always making sure that I'm in the right year because quite often I'm all over the shop. And that's good page six here. It actually explains it quite well. The years. What's that say? Okay. Sixty there. In the middle. It says if you're in April 2010, then the current financial year ends in June 2010, the financial oh. year is 2010. But if you're in October 2010, yeah. so the we're financial in... year is July, June 2011, the financial year is 2011. Yep. So for us, it's going to be 2016, correct. Yeah. Okay, so let's now look at the, uh, okay, now the preferences are fine. I don't want to go there. We can go to page, and I'm just having to check because mine's different. Page 62. Okay. Now, the very first thing that I want to check in, especially this assessment and in this book, is they enter everything from a check but. Okay, so Amanda... Can you tell me if I've got the check button, put it on the slide here, is that going to be enough? If I've got a check button on page 62 and it says Telstra, 320 bucks including GST, is that enough? You need the invoice. Okay, good. Bree, what do I need the invoice? Um, so you know what invoice number it is, what you're paying. What else? ABN. Check information. GST. Okay, so I love how the book goes here, yeah, I've got it off a check button, but quite honestly, not enough, okay. I'm happy to enter the stuff in from my boss's check book. One of the very first clients I had was shocking. He was terrible. He puts everything into check, which is fine, 
but often it would just be blank or it would have $320 in there. That would be it. And then I have to go and be, you know, Detective Marnie and find out that, what the heck did you pay? You can't remember. And I was doing his books retrospectively, i.e. I was doing 14, 15 or 13, 14 rather than 15, 16. You know, I don't know whether I'm Arthur or Martha. So, and he can't remember a year ago. So this is the sort of things that we're dealing with, okay? So you must have the invoice. You've got to have the invoice. You cannot remit anything to the ATO without the invoice. You must. It's a requirement from the ATO. You cannot claim your items on your BAS, your credit and your uh, input credits and unless you've got the BAS. Uh, sorry, unless you've got the current documentation, invoice, bill, receipt and so on. Okay? Okay. Okay, so... I'm going to explain that now because for the rest of the book, we'll just presume we've got the invoice, okay, because it doesn't make that clear in the book. All right, so our first checkbook but is on page um, 62 there, and we're paying Telstra. So we're going to head to our banking command centre. We're going to pretty much be here all day, and we're going to choose spend money. Okay, so for somebody like Telstra, let's just remember that Telstra is someone where we get the services now and we pay later. So the difference is, here's my bill for Telstra. I could do two things. If I'm, if I'm cash, I could put it into what we're doing, spend money, okay, when I've paid it, like we're about to do now. Or if I'm accrual accounting, I can see it, I enter it in as a purchase under purchases and then I pay the bill when it's due 30 days, whatever. That makes sense? Okay. So first of all, and I'll just recap for the new ones, see how the date is highlighted on your screen at the minute? Watch what happens if on my keyboard I press the, the, the plus key on the right. The number goes up or down depending on my negative or positive there. Okay. If I know that I want to enter it on the 1st of March, my ob knows that I'm in March and they know I'm 2016, I just press 1 and enter. Okay. So there's no typing one slash three slash and so on. All right. We're paying 320 bucks. If there's no cents, press tab. And I'm paying Telstra. And the card is already sitting in my card file called Telstra. In my Mimo column here, I'm putting there what I've actually physically paid for or bought. So I've paid for my telephone account. Okay, so can I just tell you from experience, there are some clients who've got more than one service provider for a phone. They've got one for their phone, they've got one for their fax, they've got one for their computer, they've got one for their laptop. You know, there's just so many. You need to be really excellent here. If they've got different names, it makes it easy. Commander, um, Telstra, they've got, um, what's another one, IINet, and there's lots of different ones. It makes it easy. But can you tell me, what it's for, please, because your accountant will certainly ask, well, what's that for? Okay, it's our job to know. Okay, we've got to get the info from the client. I am doing one, and I had this conversation with the client last night. Okay, what did you pay for? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Yeah, I don't know. Great. So then I stipulate it in an email then, <laughs> if you don't know. Okay, because uh, it's just not good enough. Okay, it's our job to know the answers and we get that from the bill that they've received. All right. So I'm going to put in here what we've bought. What else could I have put here in the memo? Month. I could put the month. That's brilliant. Absolutely. The period in which I've paid. What else can I put in? Office, or mobile phone. Office phone, mobile phone, anything else? Somebody mentioned it in the middle before. That invoice numbers? Who was that? Somebody mentioned something, what about invoice numbers? Absolutely, I can put the invoice number here. I can put the invoice number here, okay? Something like a Telstra bill, predominantly there is no invoice number. It's just a period of time. IINet and so on do have invoice numbers, but I don't remember seeing them on Telstra bills. Okay, pay 320 and notice it already goes to telephone. Um, so, Louise, why is that already coming up to telephone for me? Oh, Good girl, it. yeah. So all I've done is it's in here, and if I go to my zoom arrow here and I go to my buying details, that's where that telephone 
is being expensed to that account there, which is really handy. And the more that we set up here, we'll stipulate what comes out on our um, spend money account here. If I was in a large organisation, I could put the invoice number here, or like you were saying, for the accounts department or whatever. Okay, And again, we would need to stipulate a tax code there. That GST account is coming from here in our accounts list under telephone. There's that account. Okay, That GST has been attributed to this account called telephone expenses. What about... Um, I remember who's everybody. Megan, what about if that was for overseas calls? Can I change it now or would I have to go back to the accounts list or what would I do? I would just put everything on the telephone and whatever my lines portion is, it's probably GST to be honest, but I would just change it here. Yep, we're not going to, just showing. Okay, so if that is overseas calls and I would then make a notation here, otherwise it's GST, okay. All right, good. All right, if I'm happy with that, I'm always checking this tax amount here with the tax of GST that is on my invoice from, or my bill I should say from Telstra. I'm always marrying that up. And the last thing I haven't addressed is this thing called check number. Okay, mobs heavy into checks. No one really pays by check anymore. If you really physically have paid by check, and we have, let's put the check number, which is 1001, and that is the correct check number. If I paid it by BPay, I put in there BP for BPay and then the last three digits of that transactions. If I paid it by EFT, again EFT and then if you wanted to, the last four digits of that transaction. So in our case, we paid it by cheque and we paid it from this account here, our cheque account. Everyone happy with that? All right, let's record. So if you are working with a client and they pay, like you said, they've got a check button, they don't know where it comes from, what do you do in that instance? I have to go find it. Yeah, find it. It'll be in their car, it'll be in their briefcase, it'll be somewhere. They filed it perhaps, it might be at home with the dog. Bring it in. Yeah, I send the texts, I send the messages. You'll say, I want that. Want I it, and then I'll... The system, I have it. Yep, so if you want to claim the GST, can I have it? Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and then you make yourself a little note. Yeah, and you do. You keep little notes to yourself. Spreadsheet. I keep myself spreadsheets for each client. Yeah, babysitting them a little. Okay, let's turn the page and we just go through it just to make sure that you're happy with everything. Okay, so um, Jackie at the back. Jackie, what do I now do with my Telstra bill? Got my Telstra bill. I've put it into my... Um, I've paid it online or paid it by check. I've just paid it. Now what do I do? File. Beauty. File it. What's on my what's on the original bill there? What do I put on it? Um, paid. Paid. Good start. Receipt. Yeah, beautiful. Receipt number. Okay, it sounds really ridiculous, but we've got to be excellent. Paid receipt number. Initial it. Say because there might be more than one of you in the office. Okay. Yeah. Entered my entered stamp to make sure I've entered it in my off. Okay, and one last thing date perfect. Maybe one other thing from the date. Yeah, the way that I've paid EFT, B pay, check number, so on. Good, okay, that's great. All right, let's um, go to the second check button on page 50, 60, 66. There, all right, let's put that one in together. So it's 1002. Notice the check number. It goes in numerical order, so that's fine. First is the first, and we've paid 320 bucks. Oh no, 200. Sorry, I can't read properly. Oops, 200 dollars to the bakery, and we bought some. Um, what have we got? Bread and bread rolls. No, 
notice it comes up with GST free there. Sarah, what happens if I've bought some croissant with that? Some croissant with that. Good girl, yeah. So if you're not aware, they're happy for you to let you have your rolls, uh, you know, GST free, but the moment you buy a few cakes and some nice things, that's GST. Okay, so you've got to come down here, make a new line and code it appropriately. All right, good. Notice I've just whacked this in there, invoice. I've just made that up. Let's pretend. It's just to get into a good habit of putting invoice numbers in, especially with cash accounting. Okay, if you haven't paid by check number and you've paid it by EFT, you can put the invoice number here if you want. Okay, but normally it's where you've, how you've paid it. This goes up here. Invoice number can go here. I've just put it all in the one memo. Anything else we have to check there? Always check the GST. And again, it'll have just no GST on the on the invoice or the receipt. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead to turn the page. Let's record that, by the way, and go to the third check button on page 68. Do that one yourself. I'll put leave mine on the board. I'm sure you all can do that. Make up a period in which you're paying or copy mine. Okay, we're all pretty happy with that. We sent a check. That's the amount. That's where we're paying. And, you know, I've just made up a bill. We're paying last month's electricity bill there. Okay, can I just point out, you might occasionally get clients who work from home, okay, uh, and they're running their business from home, okay. They cannot claim this full amount. Right, they can claim a portion of that amount. There's very, very special guidelines for anybody who works from home. So just keep that in mind. If you claim the full amount, which we've done here, make a note for the accountant because they need to proportion the amount of home versus office. They can't just claim the whole amount. So is that the accountant's responsibility not us to be able to distinguish? Look, the client's going to tell you 100%. Yeah. Uh, and I say no because uh, you just can't play the whole, what the whole electricity has been on because your office is, you know, one eighth of your whole house. It just, just doesn't work like that. So if they say 70% business, 30% personal, I go no, 30% business, 70% personal. And I would split it here accordingly, put in here business, and then I make a new line for personal and make sure it equals 178. Will the tax be the same? Will my GST tax be the same? It's not going to be the same. It will not match your bill, okay, or the receipt, because that's one eleventh of that, okay? And if you're splitting it between personal, which is an NT tax code, your tax won't match, okay? To the drawings. drawings account personal if you put say 30% let's just say we agreed 30% and the accountant had differing opinions on that perhaps he said look no I really think it's 10% or no I think we'll claim a bit more great up to him to change that mm -hmm. but we're just going to make a little note for the questions for accountants at the end of the year and we will divulge that information to the accountant and then they can make the, the ruling for that so the GST adjustment could be done at that time. Of yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Just as long as we've made notations there. So you come back into each of those months? No, I would do a journal entry at the end, yeah. And we would uh, just, you know, if they weren't happy with, uh, just say he said no, you to do 70% business, okay? Uh, look, that's just, it's a bit of a contentious issue. Personally, my view on that is um, 
I know that they can't claim 70%, okay? Especially if it could be a business that perhaps didn't use the office for that much or, or whatever the, the situation might be. Uh, I would say no, I'm not going to do it. Okay. Bit of a tricky one. We're happy with that. Let's record that one. Our fourth one we're going to put in, but we're not going to press record because I want to set the next one up as um, a reoccurring transaction. So just go ahead and enter it, but we just won't press record. What are we paying? We're paying rent. And let's pay that from the 1st to the 29th of Feb. Is it for the month? Weekly. Okay. Ooh. I've got to think of my dates. 15th to 29th? No. 22nd, 23rd. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 23rd to the 29th of Feb. 16. I have to think about that. Okay. What we're doing here is because we're paying the same guy the same amount at pretty much the same period every week, um, we want to set this up as reoccurring. And so I just put the dates here. I could have easily put the dates there, not a problem. I just put it in the same one because it fits, but I could certainly split it there, okay? So by doing this and when I save it, I can see where I am up to in my rent. So let's choose to save as reoccurring down at the bottom. Are we happy with that, by the way? 275, yep. And notice it's going to the rent for the shop as an expense. So choose save as reoccurring. Let's just call a rent. Make it real easy for ourselves. You could easily leave it as it is. I'm happy with either. You could call it Ray Brown, whatever. Whatever you want to make it easy for yourself. The frequency isn't monthly. We need to change that to weekly. Let's just change that. And the next payment that we're paying with will be uh, on the 8th. That, that'll be good. So that's correct. We'll leave that. And the last thing which isn't in the book, which I do, is I save my changes. I quite like that one. So let's choose that one and choose save. What that's done now is taken a snapshot of this and stores it in our lists up here under reincurring transactions. That's where it's sitting. Let's record that one. On the next page, which is uh, using a reoccurring payment on 71 there, instead of entering all that information again, we just come down here to choose use reoccurring, click on enter, and everything's loaded in. All we've got to do is change the date. The date that we're using will now be the 8th. And I just changed this part here, the rent. So I'm now up to the 1st to the 7th of March 16. Again, you don't have to do this period, but with something like rent, I think it's really important that you know where you're up to in your rental schedule. Okay. And I can choose record there. So once I've done that, Look what happens again. Just watch this one. I don't have to do it. If I use recurring again, I can see I'm up to the 8th of March. Okay, because it keeps changing because I've used to save my, save my um, changes. That's why I know where I'm up to on my rental schedule. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay. It's saying checking our data um, with the items that we've entered on page. 72. What I can do is come down here to my register button at the bottom, click on that one, it takes me through to my bank register and from this date to this date, have this is the same in the book, yep, you can see what we've paid for and you can see there's no deposit sitting in that bank account at the moment and your balance at this stage should be 7252. Anyone got any differing amounts there? Just say that one of them was the wrong one. Um, we can correct that error. So let's just turn the page and let's correct one of the ones that are incorrect. 
let's find check number 1003. So I come to my ID, which is here. These are my check numbers, okay? And this is the one in question. I double click or I or I click on the zoom arrow, either way is fine. And it brings me back to that transaction, okay? If I wanted to delete it, I could go up here, edit, delete, just say I double duped it for some reason, okay? Um, I could amend it, I'm just changing any of the information. Nothing's been reconciled, so I can change anything on that screen that I wanted to. Um, are we doing anything? No. We're just checking it. We're not changing anything, so that's fine. All right, let's go okay. Okay, let's now turn the page and funnily enough, we're going to correct the error. Um, this wasn't in my book when this has um, been redone. Just, can you just go back to page 75 there and have a, just a quick look there. It says confirming the ABN and the GST status. You can visit that website ABR lookup tool. You can check that or an ABN lookup is another one. And you can check to make sure that that business is um, registered for GST or if you wanted to check that they've got an ABN or whatever, you can use that lookup tool there. Let's do the exercise that they've asked us to do. Just as a as a as an example there, let's go to the um, ABR lookup tool. Just type it in. You don't have to go to the proper one. And there's the file name there. I could have easily typed in that address straight away. Not a problem. And in here, if we type in that ABN that's on the bottom of page 75 there, let's see who that business relates to there. Uh, hang on, I don't think mine's right. 130867601198. What is it, Telstra? It's for my ob. <laughs> so you can tell that that person is their entity. They're a proprietary limited. They're a company. They've been active since April 2000. They're a private company. They're registered from 1st of July 2000 and they're located in uh, Victoria. So it's quite good here. You can also too to see if, um, especially too if they're somebody that you give a donation to, you can see if you can get a um, deductible gift recipient status. They must be registered to be able to claim the donation. Just remember that. So it's great if people want to donate. Just got to make sure that they uh, are able to get a tax deductible gift from that organisation. It says so here. All right. Anyone never done that entry before? So especially for a small business, we'd always just make sure that the people that they're, that they're paying are actually registered. All right, let's turn the page and correct that error for Ergon Electricity. So, right where we were. Let's go back to our register. Or, if you want to, you could easily go to your journal. Let's do it that way, actually. Let's just do a different way. Let's go to your journal. And under my disbursements, which means my payments, I can see I've paid out this bill here. And that's my check number, 1003. Let's go to the zoom arrow for them. And instead of 178, um, what is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be 187. If you change it at the top here, guys, it'll amend here. So 187 it should be. Perhaps we've got the wrong check number or whatever. And go OK. Everyone happy? All right. Let's go to page 77. Let's enter that other payment to Miller's. Let's do that by yourself. We should be up to check 1006 and we're paying Miller's Markets. You'll notice that Miller's are not actually there when you type in their name into our card file. When you press tab, you can see they're not on the list. We just create a new one by going down to that new button. And let's just make up an address for Miller's Markets, 1 Miller Street. 
and just make it in Perth or you can put in your own details there, that's fine. That's the only thing we'll put in for them. We won't bother with anything else and go okay. Let's make that invoice one, two, three, four. And we've bought some fruit and vegetable purchases. Okay, so Lisa, where are we going to put it? Um, purchases. Purchases? Purchases without GST. Correct. Perfect. Everyone happy with that? Mm. All right. All right. We could even put F and V here. I've just put it all in one. Notice the tax amount, of course, will be zero. And let's record that one. Okay, let's turn to page 79 where we're going to enter yet another payment. But this one's a good one because it means that we have to separate the different things that we've got on there. Okay, we've got some GST, we've got GST free, we've got cleaning materials. There's lots of different things. So... Let's go ahead and put it in, but we've got to make sure that we've got all those things on our invoice correctly. Total amount goes at the top, 786, and we're paying Able Wholesalers. Let's make a new company for them. Oh, sorry, a new card for them, beg your pardon. be bothering putting any information about them that's fine if you look on the next page you'll see that you've got an invoice number there it's invoice uh, 25 and then we can put in every details so we've got a five So I'm just going to add them together. I know I'm going to be putting mine different, but that's fine. I'm just going to show that there's more than one way to do it. What you've got is probably fine, so you've done something a little bit differently to me. Okay, you may or may not have this one separated out with GST. Personally, I'm going to whack them together for no other reason, but they're both the same thing. They're going to the same account. I can add those together, not a problem. If you've got 144 there with chips and then 188 for drinks, that's perfectly fine. Just remember we get paid for our time, so we just want to be the most efficient that we can. Not to say that yours is inefficient, but if it's quicker, perfect. We then told Marv that 104 bucks of those is GST free for 60 bottles of water. We've got 210 there for cleaning products and then packing materials here. Uh, let's put in there for paper, you know, the chip paper that we use.
we could have easily put in that ABN number, which is sitting on that invoice from them. Any questions about that one? Has everyone finished it? Anyone still going? Please see you're done. Um, Jet Nan. <laughs> Tara, are you good? Yep. Anyone else still not done? Is there any questions about that invoice you're not sure about? Okay, so we're always making sure that we're checking the invoice with the correct GST. Let's double check our invoice together on page, uh, what are we on, 79. Notice the tax is 62, correct. You've got to match that up at all times. We're always checking to make sure that that allocation is correct. Don't forget then that would that invoice would get filed <coughs> under A for Able Wholesalers, which is the way I like to file. I've got one client who does this thing. He just makes a payment and puts it in. Next payment goes on top. That's really great, but if I'm trying to find Able Wholesalers and he doesn't know when he paid it, it's a pain in the butt. And I'm doing this client retrospectively in 2013. I've got Lever Arch files, but he's paying me the money, so... Wonderful, you can tell that I'm not annoyed at all. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we, it's really efficient and I've told him many times, by doing it this way, under ABLE, I just go to one file and just look under A for ABLE. I'll go to the 2013 file, which could be several files, by the way, but it's still there under A. I just think it's so much better. But there you go. There's a couple of different ways, isn't there, to file. Everyone happy with that? Perfect. Let's record that one. All right, let's pay the, the other payment on page six, uh, uh, 81, beg your pardon. And what we have to do is we've bought a new computer that we're actually going to put on the balance sheet. So entry is normal. We've paid by cheque 1008 and we've spent 1738 to Downs Equipment and we have to make a new card for them because they're not currently listed. And instead of putting it to an expense account, we're going to put it through to an asset called shop equipment or fittings at cost. Are we happy with that allocation, by the way? If we wanted to, we could make a new one called computers at cost, computer equipment at cost. That would absolutely be more than happy to have created a new asset account called computer at cost, absolutely. We'll just use that one today. We're going to break that up because 1650 of that is for the computer. That's a Dell computer there. I've just made that up. And then we're going to expense the rest to, what have we bought? Paper. They've got one which is lumped into everything, postage, printing and stationery all together. Oh, can't spell today. Everyone happy with that? Okay, so Louise, can you just tell us why I've chucked in a capital there? Um, I think it's compared to you with an undercapital certain assets. Yep, that's good, good start. Sorry, wait. No, no, I like that. That's okay. exactly what we've um, done. But why have I, why do I have to use a capital account there? Um, because you want it to go on your balance sheet and it's not an expense. Good, that's good. What else? Is there any other comment? Marianne, can you elaborate? So you depreciate a 
Good. We can depreciate it. That's good. Yep, absolutely. Good. Perfect. Yeah. So this is going to go separately from the purchases. If I put GST there, it's going to go at G11. If I'm going to put it as capital, like you said, it goes on my balance sheet and it's going to go separately on my BAS. Okay, that's why when we're putting in capital uh, purchases, we always are, separate, are separating them out. Correct. We don't pay any GST on that one. Yeah, we do. Look, it's still here. Ten percent. Okay. Still ten percent. Yep. Alrighty, and then I've split it asset here and expense there, and we're always checking that one hundred and fifty-eight, and it's not on the book. But if you do one seven three eight divided by um, eleven, you'll find. That is the 10% there, 158. All right, excellent. What's the time? Not quite lunch. We're motoring through smart class. So what you need the eight for the next Ah, thank you. Yes, it will, absolutely. Uh, what are you up to the 10? Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Sometimes I forget those little things, which are big things, by the way. Don't let me gloss over it. It is a big thing. All right, I'm happy with that. Thanks for that um, amendment, and I'll just record that one. Okay, let's turn the page, and we'll see that on page 82. You've got a set of procedures. Okay, these are really important that when you go in and be a bookkeeper for someone, they're going to have a set of rules. If they don't follow these rules, the way that you enter it in here could be differently. So they've got a procedure that we would um, definitely follow. It's their policies and procedures and we would make sure that we would have those on file or be able to access them so that we know what we're doing. Okay, so end of the day, what they do is they count the cash and they balance it, balance it against the till tape. All right, I'll explain that in a minute. FPOS and the float are deducted from the gross takings. Okay, so that means if they've got um, in the till 1100 but the till tape says 1200 um, probably that FPOS amount $100 has gone directly because somebody's paid on credit card or on their um, um, bank card or whatever. To deter theft staff involved with the cash register shouldn't be responsible for doing the banking obvious reasons there for theft and uh, we do all the banking anyway. The float is left in the till and all the cash and checks are placed in the bank's night safe along with a deposit slip. Love this one next. If the till is out of balance, usually because correct change has been given, the owner balances from personal money. Not a fan of that statement there. Okay, why? Because guess what? We're the owner. I don't know about you, but you want to be 50 bucks short every day? And at the end of the week, you're 350 bucks out? I think so. Okay, so Lisa, what's an example? Why are we short? Why am I going to be short on that till? Wrong change, Tara. What else? Theft. Theft. Hate to say it, but yes. Louise? Come in and I've ordered three fish and chips and 33 Chico rolls. What could I have done in the till? I made them easy for threats, ones of years apart. Yep, I charge them for 33 fish and chips and three chip mm -hmm. Okay, so there's all sorts of things. Okay, we're human, we make mistakes, <coughs> we understand that. But what I would be doing is two things. Firstly, if I'm down all the time, if I'm, I, I'm going to check who the heck's rostered on. Let me have a look at the people that are on. And you get to know one another, you'll get to, to know the people that are rostered on. And you know who's pretty quick. You know who's pretty efficient and you know people who are just a bit lazy or just a bit inefficient. You know, we're not labelling them, but we're just trying to establish a routine here, okay? If we're down all the time, it's not our job. In this case, it is our job because we're the owner. But as a person who's doing the books, you have to balance it, okay? And sometimes the till does not balance. What I do is I make an account, and this happens in real life, an income account, either called miscellaneous income, stick it under there, okay, or something called unders and overs, I don't care what you call it, okay, 
and you've got the thing in an income account, a number four. So one day you're going to be $6.55 up. The next day you're going to be 55 cents down. So in your income account, Look, you just make an account. If you've pay, if you've received more than at the end of the year, you're going to pay tax on it anyway. If you got it in as expense and it comes at negative, you're still going to pay tax on it anyway. Okay, either either either, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, it can be an expense. I would rather put it as an income. Um, Can you put some GST? Um, <laughs> you always go with what's on the till. If you've made, yeah, what what do you do? What is the correct answer there? What so you're saying if your till said three thousand, but your money said three thousand two hundred? Correct. How do you, how do you know? You don't. You don't, you don't know whether or not that sale was. Correct. You don't know if, well, you could possibly go through every single transaction and check if there's some big anomaly in there, okay, and then we'd have to do it to unders and overs, okay. But you know what? We should be minimal as long as we don't, yeah, have a, an entry there. Yep. That makes sense? Yep. So you can put it as an expense. You can put, at the end of the day, if you've earned the income, you're going to pay tax on it. Um, if it's an expense, it goes back onto the, if in this case it's a sole trader, it's going to go against the business, the business owner's expense. It'll be added back onto his personal account. Yeah. If he's got lots of money in there, it gets added on. Okay. Um, where are we? Uh, we're on the bottom of page 62. So again, let's let's discuss what we've got here. We've got a till receipt. Um, fish and chips, let's just say for ease of purpose, agro sale of fish and chips, i.e. GST sales, were $840.50. We've got some GST free sales juice water for $103. And our total was $943. Have a look at the amount that we banked though for $718. If you have a look on the next page, which is page 83, you'll notice a negative number there. Okay, So when we're entering into mild, it's going to make loads of sense. The negative number goes as negative because it's money already gone to the bank account. So we didn't actually collect it on the day. So on the till it says we got this, but in reality we actually only got this in our hand. The portion, the difference, is gone directly to the bank. Okay, we put it as a negative number to balance up our books. And let's do a recap transaction after to see what's happening in my Okay, let's go ahead and put that in. So we're doing it on the first of the month by the looks of it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put in the amount um, here of 700. Yeah. Hang on a minute, I'm in the wrong thing. I mean, spend money and I should be in receive money. I would have got halfway through. I've got to get out of spend money because I'm actually receiving money. Cancel out. Close out of your transaction journal if that's where you were. Cancel out of your bank register. And I'm in my banking command centre. I want to go to receive money this time. That's better. Okay. So the date, again, is the first. Am I right? Yep. The payer is cash sales. Cash register takings, the same thing. And the amount received here goes how much you're actually banking. Okay, so we're banking $718.50. The payment method is, let's put cash there. Okay. And we're going to put it through to sales with GST and we split that portion out as per the roll um, from the till. So that part was $840.50. Notice your out of balance amount. It's telling you you've got too much money. Okay, so we need to just split it out. Come to the next line. Put in there sales with GST free, which was $103. And the rest goes to that 
check account as a negative number because that's gone directly from the bank from people who have paid with their um, credit card or whatever. Okay, <clears throat> notice my tax codes. I've got GST for GST sales, GST free for GST free sales, and this one, because it's gone directly from my bank, there's no tax collected or paid on that one, so it's NT. Let's just recap the transactions. Let's go up here into our menu bar and choose edit and go recap transaction. Let's just see what's happening in the background. Okay, because you're entering it, but in the background, mine's doing something different. What's gone into the bank is the amount that we've banked, plus the amount that somebody's paid with that credit card. So actually, the total will be 940 bucks, something like that. How much did it say on there? Did it say what we've took? 943.50. Can you see this on there, Till? So actually, what we took was 943. So that's what we made. Can you see that our asset account here is increasing, therefore debit. Okay. On the other hand, you can see our sales, okay, increasing, therefore credit, and our GST collected is increasing, therefore credit. That's what's happening in the background for mild. Notice both the debit and the set credit sides agree or equal. Okay, <clears throat> what we could have also done was we could have grouped it with undeposited funds if we were banking at the end of the week and we would bank one amount at the end of the week rather than individual, but we're not going to do on that one. I'll just show you my notes on that one. So if we wanted to, we could put it through to that um, holding account there called undeposited funds. And when we're ready, we clear them into our bank account. So we normally do that if we're banking at the end of the week. Okay, what happens is if we've done five days worth of sales, we get one bank entry into MyOB and it'll be shown as five entries in MyOB there. Okay, are we saving? We're saving as a recurring, perfect. So let's not press enter, let's choose this one, save as recurring. Let's just call it cash register takings perfectly. And our frequency is daily rather than monthly. And let's start that tomorrow on the second. And let's choose save my changes when I record my transaction. What happened? Uh, come up to lists if you want to pull it up again. You happy to just save it? It, it would have just said, yep, that's right. You can go up to lists if you want. Lists, reoccurring transactions. Lists, reoccurring transaction, and just choose the appropriate one and choose edit at the bottom. For everyone else, choose save. And let's record that. Okay, what we want to do now is page 85. And there's six of them. Notice they go from left to right. Can I just show you the correct way to do it? Just to, just so that you can do it quickly. Okay. Can you watch first? Or let's just do it together. Okay. So the first one is on the second. We come down here to use reoccurring and press yes, that one. We then change the date to the second just by putting in a two and pressing tab. Now the quickest way is putting the amount here. Okay, which is 381. And then you can see that we're out here. Watch what happens when I put this first amount in. I put 560 and then with my keyboard, okay, I'm going to use the down arrow. There's no tab here. Down arrow to the next one. Okay, that's the quickest way, 51. Then the down arrow is I've got, uh, what have we got, 230. See, it's got a negative. If I just choose end, I can just type in there 230 and I'm done. Okay, that's how quick it should be. And then press record. Okay. You've got to put the negative in, Yes, got to put the negative in. 
use recurring, put it to the third, change the amount at the top, okay, 5, 18, 50, and then just use your down arrow keys rather than the tab keys, just a bit quicker. And I'm finished. So it doesn't take you long. Check yourself on the following page, on page 86. Make sure that yours looks like the book. 